Hi guys, what you are looking at right now is the Sony ZV-1F, or ZV-1F, as people in my country try to get me to say, but I'm not gonna do it, because Z rhymes with the alphabet. This is a brand new release from Sony, and at $4.99, it is one of their most affordable options. But when the reviews came out about this guy, there was a lot of people saying that it was a bad camera, that it sucked. So you know what I had to do? I had to go out and buy it and try it out for myself and, uh, God help me, I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm gonna make this a quick video, an intro video, to show you guys what I have learned about the camera so far. I'm going to do a more in-depth review against uh, my iPhone 13 Pro and also uh, the ZV-1, which Sony is lending me uh, next week so that I can compare it head to head. By the way, Sony just lends me things for a brief period of time. Nobody gives me nothing. I have to go out and spend my wife's hard-earned money on cameras, and I do. I'm gonna compare it to uh, the ZV-E10 that I have as well, and maybe my A7 IV or the FX30 when that gets in. I do buy too many cameras. She is definitely right about that. But anyway, let's uh, stop talking and I'll bring you out to the vlogosphere, to the world. And that's what this camera was really intended for. So uh, let's take a look now. So then, let's use this the way Sony has intended. This is out vlogging. I'm in a lovely park, gorgeous park, almost as gorgeous as your host here, your host and MC of this vlog. And I am using Catalyst Browse because that is what I like to use when I have a Sony camera that lets me record the gyroscopic data. You run it through the free program, Catalyst Browse, and you get that gimbal-like footage without a gimbal. But here's the thing, look at this. Like, look, I just have a bend in my elbow. I could hold this out even further if I want to, and I'm not even extending my selfie stick. Now, the box is around my eye. I know it doesn't have phase detect autofocus in here. It has face, F-A-C-E, but not phase detect. It uses a contrast-based autofocus, which is concerning, but so far, so good. It looks like it's okay, and uh, there's a little bit of bokeh back there at f2.0, but at such a wide lens, at 20 millimeter equivalent, f2, you're still not gonna get much background separation, but it still looks pretty good in terms of vlogging, and uh, you know, if it works, it works. It is so small, it's like the size of a credit card here. Now people are still looking at me because I am holding up a selfie stick and a camera to my face. They're jealous, they're just jealous of me. That's all, they don't think I'm weird. So now we are gonna try the active stabilization. This is just an electronic stabilization where it crops in a little bit here to stabilize the footage. I didn't like what I saw in the reviews, but you don't know until you test it out for yourself. But there seem to be a lot of uh, weird micro jitters and wobbly things happening to the footage. So uh, we'll see if I get that same thing. The fact is, I had resigned myself to using Catalyst Browse with this camera, as I like to do with my Sonys but it would be a major benefit if I could get away with the active stabilization. That way, you know, it doesn't have a major crop in. I could just one and done. I don't have to go through another program just to stabilize my footage. So let's check that out in post and see how that did. Now see, to me, I loved that image. It looked great to me and with Catalyst Brows, that was a great vlogging camera. I got to use the Cine 2 profile I like. I applied my Paul Leeming corrective LUT. I, it, I, I used it like I always use my cameras and I love that. Now, the digital stabilization, I did not like. It is jittery, as I saw in the other people's reviews, and uh, I really think that maybe some firmware updates need to happen, but that is not very usable, in my opinion. So you're gonna want to either use stationary shots, like you're looking at right now, or uh, just put them off on a tripod, or just use the Catalyst Browse, which is how I would exclusively use this camera if I was on the move. But to be fair, I always do that with my Sony cameras because I love that uh, Catalyst Browse. I love the way the footage, it looks so gimbal-like without taking around a gimbal. But the thing, this camera was a joy to take around. It was so small and like people barely noticed that I was talking to my hand out in the park. It was just so much fun to use. And I prefer using cameras over phones for many reasons. Number one, my phone is almost always full. I have just, I never have any storage space left on my phone and people are phoning me and texting me. I am very popular and I might wanna be scrolling 
through the TikTok, I use my phone for other things. I find it cumbersome to use the phone. I go into Filmic Pro to try to control my shutter speed and my aperture and all that stuff. And then I have to, you know, grade that later in post after I take it off my phone onto the computer. It's just for me, the workflow doesn't work. Now, if you have a great phone workflow, you go right ahead and that's, you know, good for you. But I just haven't found one that fits me personally. So I think that's why a lot of people move away from their phones, even to small cameras like this one, just to have a dedicated camera. This is the camera I use for filming my dumb face. Take the SD card out, put it in the computer. You're able to adjust your shutter speed and your aperture and your ISO to your heart's content. You know, you can use S-Log2 if you want. You can use the HLG3 picture profile. You can use the Cine. It's a camera. You get to use it like a camera. And I appreciate that and I like that. And it frees up my phone to do other things. But see, herein lies the rub. A lot of people are comparing this camera. They're saying, and I think some of it is because of the Sony marketing, but they're saying, um, you know, this, you should vlog on this instead of your phone. But I would say to the beginner out there, if you're just gonna grab one, press record in the auto settings and walk around and talk, you are going to be better off with your phones. The phones have a lot of software. They're doing a lot of things to make your image look good. Whereas this guy, it's not going to look as good as the phone in automatic settings, especially when it comes to the stability. However, if you're a beginner who wants to learn about their cameras and get really good results out of it and learn about the picture profiles and maybe use the free program Catalyst Browse to smooth out your footage, then you can really, really make this camera work for you. The contrast-based autofocus, it's, it's working right now, which is it's weird because on my Panasonic cameras, the contrast-based is garbage, but uh, Sony, they got the autofocus magic even when it's not phase detect. So good for them for figuring something out. I mean, it's not perfect. And uh, the product showcase mode is definitely not very usable on the uh, ZV-1F like it is on my zv E10, so you know that is going to have to change, or just don't use the product showcase mode. I will get into all this in the full reviews and uh, when I really get down to it. And if you want to know how I shoot, if you like the image you're getting, I mean, who wouldn't like this image? Am I right? But if you like the image that I'm getting, uh, I will show you the menu settings, what I use, how to use it to get what I get. And uh, I personally really like what I am getting out of this camera. It's just sitting here in the studio. It's not really intended for a studio camera, but it's doing great here. That F 2.0 lets in a fair amount of light and uh, it's great. So anyway, I just wanted to share my first impressions of this camera. Plus my wife is out having dinner with somebody. She didn't really tell me who. Should I be concerned about that? Maybe she's really mad about all of the money I'm spending on cameras. Anyway, rightfully so. Thanks for watching this. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.